of you have done or looked at data from RNA scope? Okay, that's what you to be awesome. Um, okay, for everyone else, that's a very brief description from the ACD website of what RNA scope is. It is a method for in situ hybridization. You've got cells, and your cells have RNA located somewhere in the cell. You come in with a probe that, that matches the RNA you're looking for. You can do like one, two, maybe four RNAs at a time. This isn't like full transcriptomics, it's just a few. So you have a probe, and then there's this complicated amplification step. And at the end of all the amplification, you get one bright little point of fluorescence. For, sorry, for those of you over here, you can't really see, but what you end up with is something at the bottom there, where you got, in that case, it's two points, which means there are two RNA molecules that are detected. And so it turns um, a, a transcriptomics problem into what's effectively a counting problem. Like, find how many dots you have and, and count, and that's how many RNA molecules your cell, each cell, contains. Obviously, it's more complicated than that. These things aren't linear, so you can't actually prove that you don't you didn't miss anything or merge anything. But in general, that's the idea. So I'm going to show you some data. By the way, the workflow that I'm about to show you comes directly from the ACD website. I didn't like none of this is special. They recommend using QPath to analyze their data. So let's make a new folder. Oh, nice. Yes. RNA scope. Okay, this is a small piece of liver, and we actually stained it with three uh, control probes. One is very highly expressed, one is medium expressed, one is low expressed. And there's also moist. So you've got your nuclei, it's liver, so that the cells are pretty sparse, it looks good. The, the medium expressor is this AF555 channel. And yeah, you can see it. So you've got dot, 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 each representing individual RNAs. The green channel is the low expression channel. So here's your, in, here's your positive signal. And because it's in green, and very commonly, there's terrible autofluorescence that makes this like awful background. We can try to get rid of it. Uh, and like you, you can, but you'll, the, the, the positive signal is not that much higher than your background, so there's not going to be settings that just make it disappear. There. There. Let, me, let me just set this. This one's fairly clean, so you can do something like that. What does that look like? More? And then this, the 647 is the super high expression probe. If you see this, that's not a great in situ hybridization experiment because this is obviously uncountable. All you can see is a lot. You have tops. We're going to get what we can out of this because these experiments are also incredibly expensive. So you can't just like throw out data because it's not good. Um, but let's be it. There's a pretty low ceiling. All right. Let's start with the 555 because that's the cleanest. And we're going to do as we've done a ton of times now. We're going to create a full image annotation and we're going to detect cells. Um, I think by now you've all gotten a hang of this, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Specifically, these came off of our scanner, so I, I know what the background typically is. It's not like some fluorescence scanners are just lower. One of the nice things about the green channel is that you can actually kind of see the hepatocytes directly because of the autofluorescence. So you, I can tell that my cell boundary is not far enough out. So I'm going to rerun it with just slightly more expansion. All right, we're gonna we're gonna call this good. We're not gonna belabor cell detection more. Then analyze cell detection, cell cellular detection experimental. I find it hilarious that it's called experimental because it's been in here since version 0.1 of the software. He's, it's, it works. It's no longer experimental. We could just go ahead and trust it. So there's four channels. So it allows you to set four detection thresholds. We're going to work with one at a time and we'll go back and do all of them at the end. And so we're looking at the 555 channel, which is channel three. Um, and so that's here. 
So we need to figure out what's the um, the difference between background, like between non-point, not non-RNA point and point. And let's see. Again, looking at the lower right, the background here varies quite a bit, but I'm seeing around 1500. I have two channels showing a blue and red, and therefore there's two values. They and they're in order. So the left value, the first value is the intensity of this pixel that my mouse is on in the blue channel, and the second is this pixel in red. Um, right, so I'm setting my channel 3 to 1500. The other channels are negative 1, which sounds ridiculous, but all it really means is skip the channel. As long as it's under 0, just ignore it. We also need to tell it an expected spot size. So what I like to do is take my polygon tool and, or, or my brush tool and basically say, that is not working at all. Real one. Oh, yeah, whatever. I'm just, a spot is about four pixels. So I draw a shape that is four pixels and that says that the area is 0. 0.422. So you can also calculate this from the pixel width and height. So expected spot size of 0 0.4 and a minimum spot size has to be less than 0 0.4. Um, I'm going to go with 0 0.1. So I'm going to select one cell and hit run. Why is it finding that? Oh, because that's all one. Okay. So now within this cell, there's some extra shapes we can click on. Here, and this is all one big shape. So it is currently finding this whole thing as one subcellular spot. That's obviously wrong. That's not what I'm looking for. So let's bump this up. Click on the cell again. Okay, this is kind of ugly. The detections are really thick. So I'm going to open up preferences, type line, and make my detection line thickness 0 0.5. So now it's subtle, but there's two different colors here. The, the bright red, it means I have found, QPath has found a spot here, and this is the shape. The dark red means it's found a bunch of spots that it has grouped into one giant cluster. Since we're trying to count spots, we don't just want cluster. Um, let's, let's see what some of these split functions do. Click on a cell, split by intensity. Um, and now it's finding intensity boundaries between two bright spots and making energy lines. Or we can instead do split by shape. And now it's ignoring the actual values. So it doesn't, um, it doesn't see this boundary, but it sees this boundary really well. This is a, a watershed algorithm. We could do both. And it starts to actually get a pretty good job counting spots. It doesn't. If you don't want clusters, can you just uncheck the infinite cluster? Yes. And then anything that is bigger than two, because that's the value here, will get deleted. Okay. But I think I'd rather include these than not. So I'm going to include my clusters. If we now take a look at the measurements in the cell, all the way at the bottom. Three new measurements. The number of single spots, so the number of bright red circles here, is 42. There's an additional 14 clusters, like, like this. And then it uses the actual size of those clusters and the estimated uh, spot size here to calculate how many spots total it thinks are uh, in the clusters and in the single spots. I think just size. So you can do your own calculations yes. because you can add intensity measurements to these spots. I don't think they come with them initially, but you saw how we added Harley features and other entries. Yeah, you can do the same thing for these and then calculate your own estimated spot count. So if you see like double the intensity, you can count that as too. But yeah. you'll have to do that. Hopefully you've picked, picked up on the theme of this is that it's always better to have good data than 
bad data that you're trying to post-process into something. So if you can get your RNA scope to have truly single sparse spots, you're great. If you can't, because eh, biology is hard, at least this gives you an estimate. I'm now going to unselect everything and run it again. Process all cells. Okay. It's pretty fast. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah. It's really, that's really not so bad. So now for every single cell, we have the number of slots. Whatever threshold you set, record it somewhere, or don't and just rely on the workflow tab. <laughs> that one's just going to be confusing because we're going to run this a lot. <laughs> turn off the 555 channel, turn on the green channel. I was going to tell you to write down 2500 and then set this to negative one, but all it really needs to be is less than zero. So Mike's suggestion is just set it to negative 2500, then it's recorded, and it's still ignored. And now we're going to do the exact same thing for the green channel, but the, it's going to be harder. So here, the background is 3,200. So let's set a detection threshold of 35. Uh, and so, so we found huh? you only do one channel at a time. You can do two. It, you can do all of them. I, I just like to optimize one at a time and then one time run one more. It's triple the processing to do three. So that's real. That's real. That's not real. Uh, maybe it might be best to increase our minimum spot size and just say, if anything's only one pixel, it's probably worth ignoring. We can try different cells. Yeah, okay. 32 is a little bit better. Go look somewhere else. <laughs> Ignore that. Don't try, don't try to deal with that. So the green, it's just a little hard to see, but you still have the same thing where this is a single spot and the stoker line is a cluster. We can't change the, the expected spot size, min, max, and clustering, and actually the splitting is going to be the same across all channels in the end. So if we want to include it for the red channel, which we do, we have to include it for green. But what we can do is when we're analyzing this data is simply ignore all green clusters because we know that the, the screen is sparse and there can't be clusters and only pay attention to the number of single spots. Yep, okay. So I'm gonna use my fun trick, set that to negative, yes. So if, if you were, instead of using like the GUI, to yep. do like a script, so yes. that way you could have each one have like its own um, use intensity, split by intensity, split by shape or not, and you plug here, could you set it up that way? Um, so you can, do it once, grab the data somehow, and then do it again, yeah. as, like for three separate uh, settings. But every time you run it, it deletes, it deletes the data. Like it, it, it deletes the old things. If oh. you do it all at once, it gives you the triple process. Okay. 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 So let's turn on cluster channel four. And yeah, so this one's this one's real messy. Same thing. Oh, the background here is still super high. I three thousand and my three clusters. I want it higher than that. I think something approximately five thousand looks pretty good. You might, depending on exactly where you're looking, you might come up with something different. That's cool. Then I'm going to delete all the negatives. I'm going to unselect everything, or actually, I'm going to point pointedly select my cells. And hit run with all three thresholds. Okay, there's a lot here. I'm I'm sorry, filling it in is not really going to make it better. Uh, but you could go channel by channel and see what it's seeing um, in the green. Does that work for subcellular? For class, for class, class, for class, I'm not sure. Oh, it totally does. Okay, I'm going to repeat what I just did. I wasn't sure it would work. In the class list, right click, populate from existing objects, all classes. And it asks you to keep available classes. Yes, no, uh, wait, say yes. And now it has made six additional classes uh, 
for its spots in channel 234 and clusters in channel 234. And so we can hide, select channels three and four clusters, hide, select channel three and four spots, hide. Space bar. Yes. And of course, feel free to, if you want a different one, just show the ones you want to see. Or we can hide all of them and just get a view of the cells. Um, measure, measurement maps, channel. Can I select it? But why don't I see them now? There we go. Right. Once, okay, once subcellular spots exist, the fill thing doesn't really work that well. Oh. Anyway, within the detection measurements, this is going to take a second to pop up. Yeah. You can organize by, basically, you can export this to Excel and do a scatter plot of estimated number of purple dots versus estimated number of green dots and see if you have double positives, single positives, what's going on. Um, so each each cell each cell gives you number of uh, number of true single spots and number of estimated spots. 